Welcome to Chat with the Lawyer. I'm your host, Walla Blagay, and today we're going to be talking about consumer protection issues. Now, we all know someone or have been victims of scams of such as payday loans, car sales, tax scams, all of these that, are, that get into our pockets and take our money, and businesses are taking advantage of us. And the government has taken a stance on this, has enacted laws that are in place, has set agencies and nonprofits that are dedicated to protecting us as consumers. And we have two of our experts who are, who are going to come and talk to us about these issues. We have Monica Bass James, who is a volunteer attorney, and then we have Nicole McConluke, who is with the Pro Bono Resource Center, and they're going to talk to us about some of the laws that are that we should know about, and also some of the cases that they've worked on. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so I want each of you to introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into consumer protection issues. I'm Monica Best James. I am actually employed by the state. I work for the state controller's office, but I do, um, I volunteer as often as I can. And one of my favorite uh, organizations is the Pro Bono Resource Center, and they are a subsect of the Maryland State Bar Association. So uh, at least once a month or more often, um, I volunteer to go into court to represent folks who can't afford attorneys. And some of the cases are very compelling. People who, um, but for the fact that uh, attorneys like me, and, and you volunteered as well, um, it, but for the fact that we were there, they would end up entering into agreements that would really put them in a very bad position. Um, until this program began, from what I can tell, there really, you know, there weren't attorneys who were available to talk to them so that when they tried to negotiate with uh, debt collectors, attorneys, um, their rights were being protected and, um, and sort of kept them sort of safe. All right, Nicole. Hi, thanks for having us today. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm with Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland, um, which uh, is the pro bono arm of the State Bar Association, and I am the Consumer Protection Project Manager, meaning that I uh, recruit the attorneys who do the volunteer work, um, provide with them with training and technical assistance, and also uh, match them with opportunities to put those skills in action. Um, I uh, um, a recent lawyer, it's a second career for me, and before that I was in the state and with a small firm doing um, Social Security and Medicaid work. So I've always been very interested in public interest in general. All right, well, good work. Now, um, Monica, tell us about um, what, what cases you've seen. What are the problems that you see that are common? Um, and you volunteer in the Prince George's County um, Court. So even tell us about that, that Friday meetup. What is that? Tell us about what you've done. Um, as you mentioned, um, we end up in what's called the high five. And, and this, there's a little bit of, a, uh, I guess, a story behind that, that label. Um, originally, the debt cases were handled in Hyattsville, and there were, like, uh, it was on, I think it was courtroom five. And now they've moved it to um, the main courthouse in Upper Marlboro, but it still retained that title or that name. Um, so it's, it's high five. High five. <laughs> and then on Fridays, um, we go in, um, there are um, cases, we usually get um, cases that are um, not original debtors, but um, have been sold to debt collectors. And so we take those cases aside, we sit with the individuals who are being sued, and we talk with them about the issues and, and help them identify any defenses. For example, maybe the case is too old and the statute of limitations has run, or maybe there is no, uh, there isn't any evidence that there was an agreement between the um, the party suing our clients and, and the client. Um, now, do you, can you go now? Go on. Now you might not know as much about now. A the debt comes to let's just say the the is Citibank, right? Someone has a Citibank credit card, they haven't paid on it. So now the time is run and they've gotten all these letters from Citibank saying, look, you owe $20,000, you need to start paying or we're gonna, it's, you know, we're gonna do all types of things. And then all of a sudden, this person gets a call from John's debt collection agency. And they're saying, this is a debt collection call. Now, how does it get there? 
they sell it or how, how does it? They are sold. Um, uh, what will normally happen is that um, an original creditor will try to collect um, for a period of time and then they charge the debt off. In other words, they decide that they can't collect any further. They sell it to a third party who then, um, you know, who purchases it for pennies on the dollar and then they then um, proceed after the, um, the individual, our clients. And so, and one of the things that people need to understand is that the worst thing they can do is ignore those calls or ignore those you know, ignore those letters. You have certain rights under the um, under the law, under federal law and state law. So when someone sends you a notice that you owe something or that you owe for a bill and, and you question or, or you don't believe it, you can you have 30 days to send them a notice saying that you want them to prove that, Pro provide some sort of documentation to show that they actually do um, they do owe it. And during that 30-day period, that debt collector is supposed to stop calling you, is supposed to stop sending you letters, and provide you with that information. People don't realize that. They just kind of let people pursue them. And, um, and then they ultimately wait until they get to court when they, you know, there's a complaint filed against them and they have to defend and they often need an attorney to really start trying to protect themselves. It's usually pretty late when that happens. Listen up, answer the phone calls and ask for information. That's good, that's a good tip. Um, and um, what type of cases do you usually get? Um, I think a lot of the cases we have, um, at least the ones I've seen, they involve elderly people. They have, um, they involve single parents, um, people who have, you know, have been employed, but because of the, the you know, the, the bad turn in the economy, they've lost their jobs. Um, they're trying to survive on unemployment, and they just, they're not able to pay the credit card companies, they're not able to pay those bills that they were once able to. To, um, to pay for. And so what we do is we sit down with them and help them sort of figure out what they can manage, talk with them about um, a settlement agreement, um, if they believe it, if they believe or agree that they owe the debt. And then we talk with the opposing attorney to, to help them come up with a, an arrangement that they can live with. So um, very compelling cases. Um, one case in particular that I um, was particularly moved by, there was a young lady who was in the military. She served, was injured while she was in the military, um, was forced to, to um, be discharged because of the injury. Um, and she married while she was in the military. This guy decided that she had great credit and she had a good job, and so he married her. And she kept expecting him to move to, um, to the state where she had been stationed. He never did. He bought an expensive truck um, with her credit, you know, um, talked her into signing for it. Um, he never made the payments. And then ultimately they got divorced and he allowed the truck to be repossessed. She was sued for it. And ultimately we were able to help her. Um, ended up um, um, with the case being dismissed and, and with assurances that they were going to clean up her credit. Um, but again, a military woman who was very, um, who had lots of honors, was very well de um, decorated, had a, had a young son that she was trying to support and trying to go to school. So that's kind of the typical and certainly some of the, one of the more compelling cases. Interesting. Now can you tell us about, since you are, you coordinate the project, now tell us about the Consumer Protection Project. Um, well, we started in July 2011 um, in response to the uh, debt buyer issue statewide. Um, Monica gave you a little bit of an intro about uh, debt buyers, but um, what a lot of people don't realize is that it's something, they file tens of thousands of lawsuits a year just in Maryland. Um, so you are not alone, just yeah. know that. <laughs> it's true, and it, and it really does cross all demographic lines. Um, I have found that the the, the people hardest hit tend to be low to moderate income, usually um, not especially educated. Most of my clients um, do not have beyond a high school diploma. Um, and yeah, a lot of them are disabled. Um, they've lost jobs because of the economy or because of some kind of medical crisis. Um, and many of them actually are caretakers of children, seniors, or disabled adults at home. Um, so these kinds of cases, if they don't have help and they um, are getting a judgment against them, then that's impacting their economic security going forward, potentially for a very, very long time. Um, and uh, it impacts their ability to pay legitimate creditors. Um, 
And Nicole, can you go into now? You talked about, you named the word judgment. Now make sure people understand now when you get those letters in the mail that are like pay this or else they'll go after you. When they get to court, what can they take if a debt, if a, if a credit card or any type of business is looking to get judgments against you? What what can they take away from you? Um, they can garnish your wages. Um, the rule for garnishment is they can take about 25 percent. Um, of a certain portion of your income. Um, so they can go straight to your employer. They don't have to go through you. Um, they can go straight to your bank. They don't have to go through you. And uh, they can put liens against your property if you own a home or if you own any kind of asset. Um, and so that might not affect you now, but if you wanna sell that house, then you're gonna have a problem. Um, so that's why it's very, very important for people to make sure that um, they're not getting judgments against them. And what that really means is just that now uh, there's a court order behind that debt saying the court, you know, the government is saying that you owe that money. Um, and I think what happens a lot of times, especially in the debt buyer context, but not always then, um, is that if someone's getting sued by a name they don't recognize, then I think they may just ignore it. And that, that's a big problem. If you are getting any kind of collection actions against you, then you need to, to do something about it. Um, and that may be you know, getting a lawyer, it may be, you know, picking up the phone and talking to them. Um, a lot of people may not realize, but there are laws to protect people from harassment. I know there are lots of folks who are afraid to pick up that phone because they're afraid that someone's going to kind of rake them over the coals and shame them. And um, if that happens, there's laws against that where you could recover money. You could sue that company um, who let their, their representatives call and, and harass you. Um, so it, the most important thing that anyone can do is make sure that they're um, communicating with the person that says that they owe them money. Right. All right. Well, um, so if if someone is getting, you know, these calls and they need help from a lawyer, they can't, how do they get in contact with with you? Well, there are many, many organizations out there um, providing free legal assistance or even just low cost legal assistance, um, depending on your income. Um, you know, there, everybody knows legal aid. That's a name everyone knows. Um, Pro Bono Resource Center is also out there in the, uh, the courthouses um, assisting with consumers. Maryland Volunteer Lawyer Service is statewide. Civil Justice is statewide. Um, right here in Prince George's County, you've got Community Legal Services of right. Prince George's County, which is actually one of our project partners in the Consumer Protection Project. Um, they're an official partner. We also have um, Midshore Pro Bono, uh, Montgomery County Bar Foundation, and um, Allegheny Law Foundation as project partners officially. Um, and you know, the list just goes on and on. It really would depend on what you're looking for, but there's always, there's always somebody out there um, um, offering help. I, one thing that's very interesting to me is that I've spent my whole legal career really in public interest and I've come across so many people that have said to me, oh, nobody ever helped me, there's nobody to help me, um, and there, there are, and they're looking for you, and the, the problem has, for most of them is how to connect with the people that need their help. Um, and especially, uh, and Monica will talk a little bit about this, but they're opening um, a consumer protection office um, in Prince George's County as part of the government, and that'll be a really wonderful way to connect um, with the resources that they need. Because everybody's situation is different. It may just depend on what the facts of your own individual case are, but if you talk to someone, they can put you in the right direction at least. As, um, as a matter of fact, the um, Office of the Attorney General opened a, a consumer protection office in Prince George's, it's in Largo. And that opened on November the 19th, and it was as a result of legislation that was passed during the 2014 session. Um, there are offices in Hagerstown, Leonardtown, um, and Salisbury, and but there was a, an absence or a, need, a great need in Prince George's and Montgomery, and, or in the metropolitan area, and so they decided to put it in Prince George's County because uh, the legislation to sponsor it was uh, initiated by a Prince George's senator, and so it's another opportunity or another resource. Is, um, I do believe that Prince George's senator is representative in District Heights. I believe so too. Yes, yeah, Senator Ulysses Curry. Absolutely. Yeah. And so as a result of that legislation and 
um, those efforts. That office is now open, and so um, they they had a sort of an open house on the 19th with everybody, with you know, folks talking about the different cases and the opportunities. So they it, those offices are not staffed with attorneys, but they do have um, very you know skilled legal assistants and folks to help you process the forms and and file your complaints. Well, we're going to actually come back and talk a little bit more about that office. In addition, we're going to get into the actual cases, talking about some of the scams that people should watch out for. So we will be right back with this good information. Stay with us. Welcome back to Chat with the Lawyer. I'm your host, Walla Blagay, and I am talking with Monica and Nicole about consumer protection issues. We've had an interesting conversation, and we're going to get right, jump right back into it. Now, Monica, I do believe we were talking about the new consumer um, protection office in Prince George's County, which was um, brought here by you know our great senator, Senator Curry, in the 25th District. So. Yes. Let's, let's jump. Now, how does someone get in touch with someone there? Um, as you, there are a couple of ways. Um, Maryland has um, a website, and you can um, click on to the Office of the Attorney General's website. Then um, it's listed under, um, there's a link that tells you the, the different locations where they, have, um, okay. where they have offices. And so Prince George's new office is listed there as well. Okay. There's a physical address, and then there's also the phone number. And so you call and make an appointment. Um, probably very much like uh, the office that I work in, and I, again, I work for the controller's office in one of the field offices, and so you call, you make an appointment, and you go in, and someone, a staff person will sit with you and help you fill out the forms and um, submit them um, uh, on your behalf. Okay, good. Now let's go into the scam so people can just sort of remember some of the things that they should be watching out for. Now the most popular one we know that many politicians have attacked and looked into was the payday loans. And um, so let's talk about payday loans. Either one of you can talk about it. What, what's a payday loan and what, um, what's, what's the harm in it and what are the laws that protect someone from it? Well, a payday <laughs> loan is essentially um, a loan where you go in and the collateral in the loan is your paycheck that's coming in next. So basically, you can go into a store and um, ask for a loan and then borrow against whatever your upcoming paycheck paycheck is. So it gets you a little bit of an advance, but the problem is that in the contract to borrow this money, the interest that you're paying when you repay it are so high that you wind up, it, it winds up ballooning and when your paycheck comes, you need to go and borrow more money against the next paycheck. Um, and so the state has actually, they've closed the, uh, the storefront payday stores, but there are still a lot of ways that people can get payday loans online. And um, the, it's, it's a really ugly thing because the people that are getting these loans, they're so desperate that they have to borrow against their next paycheck. So they're already um, struggling financially and then this just runs them right into the ground. Um, so it, it's definitely to be avoided. And it's very similar to, as you know, tax season starts on the 20th of January, and a lot of That's folks will go in, um, will go, will have these um, so-called tax preparers um, prepare prepare their tax uh, their tax paperwork um, with the expectation that they'll get a refund. And a lot of these folks will charge them so much money that there's no refund. So the state has um, has is now regulating tax preparers. They're, a tax preparer is required to be licensed, and so you should ask for and see the license number or some proof that they are licensed. Um, there are all kinds of tax scams now where um, folks are calling and saying, uh, telling people that they owe taxes, that, that, that they work for the IRS, and they, de they are demanding payment by credit card on the phone. The IRS nor the controller's office will call you and ask you for payment. You'll get a notice in the mail. You'll have an opportunity to um, to challenge it. It's called due process. If you don't believe that you owe it, you have the the right to write in and say this is not correct, and I want a hearing. But neither the federal government nor the state government will call you and demand that you make payment on the phone. So this is something that folks should really be 
be conscious of and aware of because as you know, folks start filing their taxes and expecting refunds, um, these folks who really are uh, nefarious or not, not good people will try to take advantage of this season. Right, and can you talk a little bit, I know that there are these practices where um, some companies take your W-2s and they guess how much you'll get back and then they'll give you a loan. They give you like a, a loan until you get your refund. But a lot of times that can be harmful. Can you explain reasons why? It works a lot like the payday loan. So, yeah. you know, they take your your W-2s and they supposedly prepare taxes for you, your taxes for you um, with the expectation that, or with the agreement that you will pay them a portion of, and it's usually a very large proportion of whatever your refund is due. Um, and so they, they keep that money. Um, and, and just to, I, I want to add that the controller's office will prepare your taxes for you for free. For free. Yeah. So you have to bring in your prepared federal taxes. That's the only thing that's required. And we will prepare and file it for you at no charge. So these folks who pre are pretending to be legitimate tax preparers who charge you exorbitant or ridiculous amounts of money to prepare your tax forms and then they want to keep a large portion of your, your refunds are, you know, they're just, it's so unnecessary for you to go to them because there's so many other avenues and opportunities. Interesting. Well, and you know, just the, 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 the idea is probably you should just wait for the refund from the government instead of getting any type of loan. But that's good information. Now, what about car issues? People buy cars and there's all types of scams of bringing in your pay stub and we'll give you a car or, you know. So can you talk a little bit about the car Absolutely. scam? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest issue that people are likely to come across um, these days is yo-yo sales. And what that means is that, you know, if I want to buy a car, I go in, um, the dealer, uh, the contract to buy the car is written on the condition that I pass the financing. Then um, I leave with the car, you know, we've signed the contract, all's well and good, until the dealer calls me. It could be, you know, a couple days later, it might be a few weeks later, um, and they say, oh, well, you know, the financing didn't go through, you weren't approved, um, so now you need to come back in and sign a new contract because the old one doesn't count anymore. So, of course, the new contract is way more expensive um, and usually has uh, really harsh terms, and the consumer's over a barrel because they've already been driving this car. You know, a lot of times this is people's transportation to and from work, pick up their kids, the whole nine yards, and um, what happens is that they, um, you know, the contract's much more expensive, and um, it, it winds up being a huge problem. You know, even if you want to give the car back, then now you have to pay a penalty, and so a lot of people can't afford to do that, so they have to figure out a way to afford the car, and then um, if that doesn't work out, um, a lot of folks get repossessions, you know, whether it's a yo-yo right. sale or not. Um, and I think one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that um, repossessions, there's actually so many things that can go wrong in your favor. Um, there are so many rules about what kind of notice the, the company has to give you before they take it, um, before they sell it, after they sell it, and right. any kind of problem with those, if they don't do, you know, if they don't cross every T and dot every I, then, um, you know, then, then they've done wrong against you under the law, and there are uh, avenues for you to get relief. And in addition to that, because we have so many military personnel in this area, there are special laws that apply to protect military personnel who purchase vehicles and let's say they're deployed um, and, and they're not able to make payments or whatever, there, um, there's special notice requirements that have to be met. And, and those protections were um, enacted to make certain that our military personnel are protected while they're serving overseas. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, if, you, if there's a question, if, there's an, um, if you have a doubt, call a lawyer. Also, going into that, what are some ways to avoid, that some consumer could avoid those issues when they go to a, to a car dealership? Are they, you know, make sure that they are approved before they get there? I mean. I think that that's always a good idea, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and make sure that you are bringing someone with you. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lawyer, obviously, um, but just somebody who's with you as an advocate or kind of moral support, because I think 
one of the things that's, that's hardest and contributes very much to consumer protection problems is when people get in a situation where they're nervous or they're put on the spot, then they're gonna agree to something that's not realistic for them. Um, or you know maybe they're, they're not understanding everything and they're um, hoping to just get it all over with and, and walk away with what they need for that day. Um, you know, if you bring some kind of backup with you of somebody who at least can take some notes and make sure that you understood everything and um, that you're asking all the questions that you need to ask, I think that's probably one of the best things that you can do. Okay, and um, are there any other scams? You mentioned that you dealt with a lot of elderly um, um, individuals who you've represented. Are there, is there any scam that's sort of targeted towards the older? Um, I think generally um, just folks, um, take, for example, taking credit cards out in um, the names of family members or folks that they're supposed to be caring for, um, running up the, um, the amount uh, of the charges on the cards and then um, not paying and leaving the elderly person stuck with that, um, that financial obligation. And that is such a huge issue, and you see it actually in so many contexts. And um, the case that Monica mentioned earlier with the young servicewoman who um, her husband um, abused her in this way, this is actually even a large component of domestic violence, is this financial abuse where um, someone either uh, kind of convinces the other person to take out accounts in their own name or forces them to, or even, you know, there are some people that will just, you know, I, I know my husband's social security number, so um, there are people out there who will just go ahead and the, the person whose name it is doesn't even know. Um, and this happens all the time with elders, with uh, couples, and then there's even people that will take out um, accounts in children's names. And, you know, and, and then they don't find out until they're 18 or, or 21 and trying to get credit or buy a car or, or rent an apartment, and it's, it's very, very ugly. Um, so I, I hope that we're, we'll be able to shed some light on this, uh, especially in the context of elders. Now, for the children, how do they deal with that? If you become 18, you look at your credit, you find you have all these charges on there, is there a way to address that so that you can get it off your credit? Absolutely, you would want to, um, at first, if you have some kind of, if you suspect some kind of identity theft against your name or your um, social security number or anything, first thing you'd want to file a police report, actually. Um, and then you'd want to reach out to all of the credit bureaus and advise them that this is not you, um, this was not correct. Um, and then they'll be able to give you resources from there, depending on your situation, to continue fighting it. Um, but you you have to make sure that you take care of it. E you know, even if you know that that's not um, that was not your account, you didn't use that. Um, that's not always going to be good but enough by itself. Um, you're going to want to make sure to reach out and um, notify the authorities about that. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you submit it in writing, because if you simply call, um, that's not that's not. A document that you haven't documented your right. claim or your um, or the issue. You need to make sure that you write a letter and send it to the credit bureaus, um, stating in detail your name and the account and and the issue, so that there is a record, um, and you kind of proceed from there. Well, thank you all so much. This has been a really informative show. Now, Nicole, what if somebody wants to contact? the Pro Bono Resource Center to get more information or even get a representative, a pro bono attorney to cut to, to help them. How do they contact you? Well, our website is www.probonomd.org. Um, and so I think that's probably the first and best resource. We also have um, a comprehensive guide to legal services that we put out, and you can download it from that website as well. Um, so that compiles everything statewide, um, and it's organized by topic, uh, what kind of legal issue it is. So that's going to be a wonderful resource, resource for anybody looking for help. And is that how we would get to a great attorney representative like Monica? Yep. All right. Thank All you. Right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a great show. I want to thank you all for coming on the show. And also, if you have any additional questions, you can contact us at chatwiththelawyer at gmail.com or you can go to the website at www.wallamlegay.com. Thank you for watching the show. See you next time.